The problems we're going to do next have to do with calculating the volume of some shapes. Cones, pyramids, and spheres. And these problems get a little bit tricky. The formulas look kind of complicated. The volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. So r squared, that's the radius of the circle on the bottom. And h is the height of the cone from the bottom to the, to the tip. The uh, volume of a pyramid looks pretty similar. It's um, one-third times the base square, uh, squared. And this is a square pyramid, so that one side of that would be the base. And then the height would, again, be from the tip to the bottom, kind of down in, into the middle, not down the side. And then the volume of a, a, of a sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed. And r, that's the radius of the, spe of the sphere, so the distance from a point in the center of the sphere to the edge of the sphere. Now, it's OK if you can't memorize these, but you should be able to look them up quickly on the internet. And it's an easy thing to do. Just go to a search engine, type in volume of sphere, volume of a pyramid, volume of a cone, and you can find these formulas. You do, however, need to be able to apply them to plug in the right numbers. So we're going to try a couple of problems uh, about that. This first one says, what is the volume of, a th of the sphere? And dimensions are in meters. And you notice they give us this line here with a 6 on it. And it's from the center of the sphere to the edge. So that is the radius. So the radius equals 6. And if you've already forgotten what the volume of a sphere is, you go to the internet and you look that up and you find out it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now you've seen r squared before, or any number squared, and when you square a number, it's that number times itself. When you cube a number, you multiply a number by itself three times. So if I were going to write this out a little bit differently, I would write 4 thirds pi times 6 times 6 times 6, like that. And now we can, we can start plugging this in. I'm going to take 3.14 for pi, just as a shortcut. I'm going to multiply it by 6, by 6, by 6. And now we have 4 thirds. So the way I would do that is probably multiply it by 4 and divide by 3. So I think I'll do that. And I come up with 904.32, and this is meters, meters. Now this is volume. When we have area, it's units squared. When we have distance, it's just units. With volume, it's cubed, always. So the volume of this sphere is 904.32 cubic meters. That's a pretty big sphere. All right, now this one gets even trickier. What we have here is a square-based pyramid inside a cube. The problem says the pyramid has the same base and height as the cube that contains it. What is the difference between the volume of the cube and the volume of the pyramid? So they want the difference between the volume of the cube and the volume of the pyramid. So it would be the volume of the cube minus the volume of the pyramid. I'm just going to write that down so I don't get confused. Well, what I need to do is figure out the volume of the cube and the volume of the pyramid and then do the subtraction. So let's figure out the volume of the cube first. With any kind of rectangular prism, you take the length times the width times the height, and you've got your volume of a rectangular prism. A cube is one of those, so it's 4 times 4 times 4, and that is 64. Now the volume of the pyramid, you might have to look that up. And get our sheet back out here. It's one third base squared times height. So let's just draw a little line down here. I'm going to work on the pyramid stuff over here. One third base squared height. Well, the base is down here, and that's four. So we can put that in there. One third times four squared, or I'll just write it as four times four. But what's the height here? We don't have a line running from the bottom of the pyramid up to the top and showing us a measure. But this pyramid fits exactly in this square. So the bottom of the pyramid is on the bottom of the, sorry, the cube, not the square. The bottom of the pyramid is on the bottom of the, of the cube, and that tip of that pyramid touches the top of this cube. Well, what distance is that? 
it's the same as this distance from top to bottom of the cube, it's 4. So the height here is going to be 4, so I get 1 third times 4 times 4 times 4. And when I plug that in my calculator, I would type actually 4 times 4 times 4 divided by 3, and I get 21.3 repeating. Now I can do my subtraction. I've got 64 minus 21.33 repeating, and I get 42.6 repeating. And the dimensions were in centimeters. Whoops, bring that up. D dimensions were in centimeters, and these are cubic centimeters because this is volume. Volume is always cubed. All right, one more. This one says a tennis ball is placed in a cylindrical container. Packing material is to be placed in all the voids in the cylinder. So wherever the tennis ball isn't, they're going to put packing material in there. I guess they really want to protect that tennis ball. What is the volume of the cylinder that has to be filled with the packing material? Use 3.14 for pi, that's supposed to be pi, and dimensions are in inches. Well, we need to figure out, to figure out the space that the packing material has to fill, uh, we need to figure out how, what the volume of this uh, sphere is, and then subtract that from the volume of the cylinder, and what's left would be the part of the cylinder that's not filled by the sphere. So it would be the volume of the cylinder minus the volume of the sphere. That's what we're looking for. Well, the volume of a cylinder, we should remember that one. It's the area of the circle uh, and then times the height. Well, it looks like this circle, they're showing it has a, a diameter of 4, so its radius would be 2. The area of the circle is pi r squared. So I would put in my 2 for r. 2 times 2 is 4, so that's 4 pi. So 3.14 times 4 is 12.56. So that's the area of the circle, but to get the volume of the cylinder, I need to multiply it by the height, and the height is 4. So multiply 12.56 times 4, and I get 50.24. So that is the volume of this cylinder. Let's try the volume of the sphere. If the radius up here of this circle is 2, that's also going to be the radius for our sphere because it perfectly fits inside. So the distance across this sphere is going to be 4. So the radius would be 2. And uh, if you have forgotten what the formula for the volume of, of a sphere is, you're going to have to look that up again. It's 4 thirds pi r cubed. Volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, and r radius is 2, so volume equals 4 thirds pi, and then I'll write this as 2 times 2 times 2, that's 2 cubed. So we can start um, plugging this in the calculator now, 3.14 times 2 times 2 times 2, uh, and then I would do times 4 divided by 3 and I get 33.49 and some change. We'll just round it off to two decimal places there. Now, to get the area not occupied by the sphere, I'm going to subtract this from this. So 50.24 minus 33.49, and I get 16.75. And this is inches. And because it's volume, it's going to be cubic inches. So that's how much volume they would need to fill with the packing material. So those are some pretty involved problems that have to do with the volumes of shapes.